on BBC One, we can now join the BBC's news teams where you are. Bye-bye. Hello, good evening. Welcome to Northwest tonight with Roger Johnson and Annabelle Tiffin. Our top story, the rugby legend who underwent revolutionary surgery in a world first operation so that others could live. Steve Prescott had 32 hours of experimental transplant surgery. Tonight, his widow meets the woman whose life he helped to save. It's amazing. I feel uh, it's just nice to be able to eat again and drink. I can just have my life back again, really. His surgeon says he carved a path where there was none. Also tonight, tributes to a father of four from Bolton killed when a crane crashed through a mosque during the annual Hajj pilgrimage. Beaten Andy Burnham is the Shadow Home Secretary as Jeremy Corbyn appoints seven North West MPs to Labour's new top team. And join me, Nick Knowles, later where DIYS West is undertaking its largest ever project here in Manchester. He carved a path where there was none and achieved a result on a cosmic scale. That was the tribute paid to the legendary St Helens rugby league player Steve Prescott by the surgeon who carried out a 32-hour experimental transplant operation on him in a world first. Steve was diagnosed with abdominal cancer the day after the birth of his second child. Although he died following the surgery, what medics learned from the operation has enabled them to save others. Well, this weekend, Steve's widow, Lindsay, met the first patient to benefit from her husband's bravery. Becky Meehan has this exclusive report. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. You How too. Are you? An embrace between two yes. strangers yes. whose lives are inexorably linked. Claire Place is a cancer survivor, yes. alive because of the bravery of rugby league star Steve Prescott, who died two years ago. This weekend, she met Steve's wife, Lindsay, at her home in St Helens. I've had... Half of my stomach replaced, the small bowel, some of my large bowel put back in, um, new pancreas, they resected the bladder and an abdominal wall and they took out the spleen as well. Claire's had pseudomyxoma like Steve for eight years. Earlier this year, as traditional treatments began to fail, she underwent the procedure pioneered on the rugby player. In the last weeks of his life, Steve volunteered himself as a guinea pig for a 32-hour operation that saw surgeons transplant his stomach, pancreas, duodenum, small bowel and external abdominal wall. Steve survived the procedure but died three weeks later at the age of just 39. We talked about the risks because obviously we knew it had never been done. We didn't know what the outcome would be. And he said that if it wasn't successful for him, if it helps somebody else in his position with pseudomyxoma, if it gave them hope and it gave them an option, then it will be all worthwhile. And for Claire, it certainly was worthwhile. Everything about me was just not looking good. And I just, I, I'd look at myself in the mirror and think, I can't carry on. I, I, there's no way I can carry on. I'm doing, you know, my body was just disintegrating in front of me. So I didn't have, I don't know how, I don't know how long I had, but it wasn't looking good. And what do you think you look in the mirror now? I think, oh. I think my life is back. I'm, I'm back again now. Steve's doctor praised his will to live, telling us in a statement that Steve achieved a result on a cosmic scale for other patients and lit the path for many more to come. Had Steve not gone through it, then I don't know how, how it would have been possible for anyone else to go through it. You know, it was something that he, he really pushed for, didn't he? Really, he did, really, yeah. really yeah. pushed. The rugby league community has marked Steve's memory in all sorts of ways, including the Steve Prescott Bridge at Langtree Park and the Steve Prescott Cup, which is played out between Hull FC and St Helens each year. But his great dream was a triathlon in his hometown. Well, this weekend was the inaugural race and Claire was guest of honour. Yeah, I feel quite emotional actually, I think with Claire being here as well. But yeah, just all enjoy it and um, yeah, good luck everybody. Thanks, ladies. Marking her new start, thanks to Steve, as the official starter of the event that was his last wish. Becky Meehan, BBC Northwest Tonight, St Helens. Well, you uh, saw Steve Prescott's wife, Lindsay Prescott, in that report. Earlier I spoke to her in a little more detail and asked her if it had been a difficult decision for Steve to have the first operation of its kind in the world. 
it wasn't very difficult at all, to be honest. He got to a stage with his illness that he couldn't continue the way that he was going. Um, he had no other option and he just wanted somebody to give, to give him some hope. It was this operation, ultimately, sadly, which led to him passing away. It wasn't the cancer that eventually caught him. No, Stephen was actually cancer-free when he passed away. Um, the operation was successful. They managed to remove the pseudomyxoma um, and it was further complications three weeks down the line for after surgery um, that actually caused Stephen's death. And it was something called graft versus host where the organ rejects the recipient. By the time they worked out what was happening, it was just too late for Stephen. But not too late for many others. Um, Claire is the first person who's gone through it successfully and, and as we saw in, in Becky's report, is fit and well. What was it like for you meeting her? It was fantastic when I met her at the weekend. I've been in close contact with the family from the day that Claire went into theatre. Her husband's kept me up to date and um, we have become quite close, but on Saturday it was the first time that I'd actually met the family. Um, and to see her looking so well and doing so well, she was eating, drinking. Obviously, Stephen hadn't eaten or, or, or had anything to drink for six months prior to his surgery. So for me to see what could have been was quite hard, really. I was going to say, was it bittersweet for you? It was, but you can't turn back the clock, can you? And I suppose, obviously, we all want, wanted Stephen to be there with us, but it's not the case. And um, it was just fantastic for me to see that he's, Stephen has led the way for Claire and for others. And, and it's a hope for people with pseudomyxoma. The triathlon we just saw, I guess he probably would have loved to have taken part in that. He would have done. Stephen, for a good couple of years, tried so hard to put the triathlon in place, and he definitely would have been taking part in that on Sunday. <laughs> it was his final wish. Now you've put that in place, is that the end? And certainly not, no. The Steve Prescott <laughs> I figured Foundation. you might say that to me. <laughs> uh, the Foundation's gone from strength to strength, and... Um, yeah, we're always looking for new challenges and we've got a challenge in October coming up, the Kilimanjaro Challenge, which will see um, us attempting the World Guinness Book of Records for the highest rugby league game. Um, we've got 40 people going up, uh, up the mountain and playing that game and we also have to take an official referee. We have to take the rugby posts. Everything has to go, uh, has to go up there and it has to be a full 80 minutes as well. So um, that's something quite big, really, and something that we'll build on. Thank you very much for coming in and for telling us all about the ongoing work that the Steve Prescott Foundation is doing. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Oh, Lindsay Prescott there, work, mm, speaking to me uh, earlier. And just so you know, uh, Becky Meehan and the North West Tonight team will be following that Kilimanjaro trip every step of the way.